I wanted to be a rock star. I dreamed of it, and that's all I dreamed of.、Uh, I should be more accurate. I wanted to be a pop star. This was in the late '80s, and、um, mostly I wanted to be the fifth member of Depeche Mode or Duran Duran. <laughs> They wouldn't have me. I didn't read music, but I played synthesizers and drum machines. And I grew up in this little farming town in northern Nevada, and I was certain that's what my life would be. And when I went to college at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, when I was 18, I was stunned to find that there was not.、Uh, Pop star 101, or even a degree program for that interest, and the choir conductor there、uh, knew that I sang and invited me to come and join the choir. And、uh, I said yes, I would love to do that. Sounds great. And I left the room and said no way.、Uh, I, I, the choir people in my high school were pretty geeky, and there was no way I was going to have anything to do with those people. And about a week later, a friend of mine came and said, "Listen, you've got to join choir. At the end of the semester, we're taking a trip to Mexico, all expenses paid, and the soprano section is just full of hot girls." <laughs> and so I figured, for Mexico and babes, I could do just about anything. <laughs> and I went to my first day in in choir, and I sat down with the basses and sort of looked over my shoulder here to see what they were doing. They opened their scores. The conductor gave the downbeat, and boom, they launched into the Kyrie. From the Requiem by Mozart, and my entire life I had seen in black and white, and suddenly everything was in shocking Technicolor. It, it, the most transformative experience I've ever had in in that single moment, hearing dissonance and harmony, and people singing, people together, this shared vision, and I felt for the first time in my life that I was part of something bigger than myself. And there were a lot of cute girls in the soprano section, as it turns out. I decided to write a piece for、uh, for choir a couple of years later as a gift to、uh, this conductor who had changed my life.、Uh, I had learned to read music by then, or s- slowly learning to read music. And that piece was published. And then I wrote another piece, and that got published. And then I started conducting, and I f- ended up doing my master's degree at the Juilliard School. And I find myself now in the unlikely position of standing in front of all of you as a professional classical composer and conductor. Well, a couple of years ago,、um, a friend of mine emailed me、uh, a link, a YouTube link, and said, "You have got to see this." And it was this young woman who had posted a fan video to me, singing the soprano line to a piece of mine called "Sleep." Hi, Mr. Eric Whitaker.、Um, my name is Brentlin Lucy, and this is a video that I'd like to make for you. Here's me singing "Sleep." I'm a little nervous. Just to let you know. If I was thunderstruck. Brindlin was so innocent and so sweet and. Her voice was so pure, and I even loved seeing, you know, behind her, I could see the little teddy bear sitting on the piano behind her in her room. Such an intimate video, and I had this idea: if I, if if I could get 50 people to all do this the same thing, sing their part, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass, wherever they were in the world, post their videos to YouTube, we could cut it all together and create a virtual choir. So I wrote on my blog,、uh, OMG, OMG. I actually <laughs> actually wrote OMG. Hopefully for the last time in public ever. <laughs> And I sent out this call to singers, and I, I made free the、uh, the download of the music to a piece that I'd written in the year 2000 called "Lux Aurumque," which means light and gold. And lo and behold, people started uploading their videos. Now, I should say before that, what I did is I posted a conductor track of myself conducting, and it's in complete silence when I filmed it because I was only hearing the music in my head, imagining the choir that would one day come to be. Afterwards, I played a piano track underneath so that the singers would have something to listen to. And then, as the video started to come in, this is Cheryl Ang from Singapore. This is Evangelina Etienne.
from Massachusetts. Stephen Hansen from Sweden. This is Jamal Walker from Dallas, Texas. There was even a little soprano solo in the piece, and so I had auditions. And a number of sopranos uploaded their parts. I was told later, and also by uh, lots of singers who were involved in this, that they sometimes recorded 50 or 60 different takes until they got just the right take. They uploaded it. Here's our winner of the soprano solo. This is Melody Myers from Tennessee. I love the little smile she does right up at the top of the note, like, yeah, no problem, everything's fine. <laughs> And from the crowd uh, emerged this young man, Scott Haynes, and he said, listen, I, this is the project I've been looking for for my whole life. I'd like to be the person to edit this all together. I said, thank you, Scott. I'm so glad that you found me. And Scott aggregated all of the videos. He scrubbed the audio. He made sure that everything lined up. And then we posted this video to YouTube about a year and a half ago. This is Luke's Arumque, sung by the Virtual Choir. of time. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there's more. There's more. Thank you so much. And I, I had the same reaction you did. I was I actually was moved to tears when I first saw it. I just couldn't believe how the, the, the poetry of all of it, these, these, uh, these souls all on their own desert islands, sort of sending electronic messages and bottles to each other. And the, the video went viral. We had a million hits in the first month, and it got a lot of attention for it. And because of that, then a lot of singers started saying, all right, what's Virtual Choir 2.0? And so I decided for Virtual Choir 2.0 that I would choose the same piece that Britlin was singing, Sleep which is another work that I wrote uh, in the year 2000, poetry by my dear friend Charles Anthony Silvestri. And again, I posted a conductor video, and we started accepting submissions. This time we got some more mature members. On my people, and some younger members. That's Georgie from England. She's only nine. Isn't that the sweetest thing you've ever seen? Someone did all eight videos of bass, even singing the soprano parts. This is Bo Auten. And our goal, it was sort of an arbitrary goal. There was an MTV video where they all sang lollipop, and they got people from all over the world to just sing that little melody, and there were 900 people involved in that. So I told the singers, that's our goal. That's the number for us to beat. And we just closed submissions uh, 
January 10th, and we, our final tally was 2,051 videos from 58 different countries. Thank you. Uh, from Malta, Madagascar, Thailand, Vietnam, Jordan, Egypt, Israel, as far north as Alaska and as far south as New Zealand. And uh, we also put a, a, a page on Facebook um, for the singers to, to upload their testimonials, what it was like for them, their experience singing it. And I've just chosen a few of them here. My sister and I used to sing in choirs together constantly. Now she's an airman in the Air Force, constantly traveling. It's so wonderful to sing together again. I love the idea that she's singing with her sister. Uh, aside from the beautiful music, it's great just to know I'm part of a worldwide community of people I never met before, but who are connected anyway. And my personal favorite, when I told my husband that I was going to be a part of this, he told me that I did not have the voice for it. it yeah, I'm sure a lot of you have heard that too. Me too. Um, it hurts so much and I shed some tears, but something inside of me wanted to do this despite his words. Is a dream come true to be part of this choir, as I've never been part of one. When I placed a marker on the Google Earth map, I had to go with the nearest city, which is about 400 miles away from where I live. As I am in the great Alaskan bush, satellite is my connection to the world. So two things struck me deeply about this. The first is that human beings will go to any lengths necessary to find and connect with, with each other. Uh, it doesn't matter the technology. And, and the second is that people seem to be experiencing an actual connection. It wasn't a virtual choir that, you, that there are people now online, they're friends, they, they've never met. But I, I know myself too, I feel this virtual esprit de corps, if you will, with, with all of them. I feel a closeness to this choir, almost like a family. Uh, what I'd like to close with then today is um, the, the first look at Sleep, uh, Virtual Choir 2.0. This will be a premiere today. We're not finished with the video yet. You can imagine with 2,000 synchronized YouTube videos, the render time is just atrocious. Uh, but but we, um, we do have the first three minutes, and it's, it's a tremendous honor for me to be able to, to show it to you here first. You're the very first people to see this. This is Sleep, the virtual choir. <laughs> I'd like you all to ask yourselves a question which you may never have asked yourselves before. 
What is possible with the human voice? What is possible with the hu human It was coming straight for me. I had to. It was, yeah. As you can probably well imagine, I was a strange child. Because <laughs> um, the thing is, I was, I was constantly trying to extend my repertoire of noises to be the very maximum that it could be. I was constantly experimenting with these noises. And um, I'm still on that mission. I'm still trying to find every noise that I can possibly make. And uh, the thing is, I'm a bit older and wiser now, and I know that there's some noises I'll never be able to make because I'm hemmed in by my physical body. There's things it can't do, and there's things that no one's voice can do. For example, no one can do two notes at the same time. You can do two-tone singing, which um, monks can do, which is like... Um, but that's cheating. <laughs> and it hurts your throat. So, um, so there's things you can't do. And these limitations on the human voice have always really annoyed me. Because beatbox is the best way of getting musical ideas out of your head and into the world. But they're sketches at best, which is which is what's annoyed me. If only, if only there was a way for these ideas to come out unimpeded by the restrictions which my body gives it. So I've been working with these guys and we've made a machine. We've made a system which is basically a live production machine, a real-time music production machine. And it enables me to, using nothing but my voice, create music in real time as I hear it in my head, unimpeded by any physical restrictions that my body might place on me. And um, I'm going to show you what it can do. And before I start making noises with it and using it to manipulate my voice, I want to reiterate that everything that you're about to hear is being made by my voice. This, this system has... Thank you, beautiful assistant. <laughs> this, um, this system has no sounds in it itself until I start putting sound in it. So there's no pre-recorded samples of any kind. So, once this thing really gets going and it really starts to mangle the audio I'm putting into it, it becomes not obvious that it is the human voice, but it is. So, I'm going to take you through it bit by bit and start nice and simple. So the polyphony problem, I've only got one voice, how do I get around the problem of really wanting to have as many different voices going on at the same time? So the simplest way to do it is something like this. By dancing, that's like this.
So that's, that's probably the easiest way. Um, but if you want to do something a little bit more immediate, something that you can't achieve with live looping, there's other ways to layer your voice up. There's things like pitch shifting, which are awesome. And I'm going to show you now what that sounds like. So I'm going to start another beat for you like this. There's always got to be a bit of a dance at the start because it's just fun. So you can clap along if you want. You don't have to, it's fine. Check it out. I'm going to lay down a bass sound now. And now a rockabilly guitar. Which is nice. But what if I want to make, say, a uh, thank. What if I want to make, say, a rock organ? Is that possible? Yes, yes it is. is. By recording myself like this. And now I have that. <laughs> I have that recorded. Assign it to a keyboard. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> but what if I? What if I wanted to sound like the whole of Pink Floyd? Impossible, you say. No. It is possible, and you can do it very simply using this machine. It's really fantastic. Check it out. <laughs> So every noise you can hear there is my voice. I didn't just trigger something which um, sounds like that. There's no samples, there's no synthesizers. That is literally all my voice being manipulated. And when you get to that point, you have to ask, don't you? Um, what's the point? Why, <laughs> why do this? Um, because it's cheaper than hiring the whole of Pink Floyd, I suppose is the easy answer. I'd like to give you guys a bit of a demonstration about what I do. next number. I'd like to return to the classics. We're gonna take it back. Way back. Back into time.
So. Thank you very much, TEDx. If you guys haven't figured it out already, uh, my name's Tom Thumb, and I'm a beatboxer, which means all the sounds that you just heard were made entirely using just my voice, and the only thing was my voice. Uh, and I can assure you, there are absolutely no effects on this microphone whatsoever. And I'm very, very stoked. <laughs> you guys are just applauding for everything, it's great. Look at this, Mum, I made it. Uh, I'm very, very stoked to be here today, you know, like representing my kinfolk and all those that haven't managed to make a career out of an innate ability for inhuman noise making. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, it is a bit of a niche market and there's not much work going on, especially where I'm from. Uh, you know, I'm from Brisbane, which is a great city to live in. Woo! All right, most of Brisbane's here, that's good. <laughs> no, um, you know, I'm from Brizzy. Uh, which is a great city to live in, but, you know, let's be honest, it's not exactly the cultural hub of the Southern Hemisphere. So I do a lot of my work uh, outside Brisbane and outside Australia, and so the pursuit of this crazy passion of mine has enabled me to see so many amazing places in the world. So I'd like to share with you, if I may, my experiences. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take you on a journey throughout the continents, and throughout sound itself. We start our journey in the central deserts. <laughs> and before we reach our final destination, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to share with you some technology that I brought all the way from the thriving metropolis of Brisbane. Uh, these things in front of me here are called chaos pads, and they allow me to do a whole lot of different things with my voice. <clears throat> For example, the one on the left here allows me to add a little bit of reverb to my sound, which gives me that. <laughs> flavor. <laughs> and uh, the other ones here, you know, I can use them in unison to uh, mimic the effect of a drum machine or something like that. I can sample in my own sounds and I can play it back just by hitting the pads here. Way too much time on my hands. And last but not least, the one on my right here allows me to loop, 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 loop. 
whoop, 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 whoop. My voice. So with all that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take you on a journey to a completely separate part of Earth as I transform the Sydney Opera House into a smoky downtown jazz bar. All right, boys, take it away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you a very special friend of mine, one of the greatest double bassists I know, Mr. Smokey Jefferson. Let's take it for a walk. Come on, baby. <laughs> gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you, the star of the show, one of the greatest jazz legends of our time, music lovers and jazz lovers alike. Please give a warm hand of applause for the one and only Mr. Peeping Tom. Take it away. Thank you, thank you very much. 